pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, hello everyone. Hello. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is to receive oral communications from members of the public. Members of the public may address the select board for up to three minutes, longer with the permission of the chair. The select board shall not engage in discussion on topics raised during public comment, but may choose to add the topic to a future agenda. This agenda segment will be limited to 15 minutes unless extended at the discretion of the chair. Do we have any public comment? Come on up. So, um, Brian Colloran, 293 High Road. Hi, hey, Brian. Hi. Um, so, um, right, I'm Brian. Uh, I expect that I'm done being the chair of the CONCOM for Newberry. Um, I began that service in 2018. Newberry is the third town where I've been part of the commission. That doesn't go up. Really? <laughs> How about above, up higher, like right underneath the bot? The, the, this, is that? Does that work? No, they just slanted, I think. Yeah. yeah All right. Oh, well, I mean, I'll just hold it. <coughs> <laughs> Anyway, right, so 2018 was when I started Newberry's at Third Town, where I've been part of the Conservation Commission. Uh, I've got a graduate degree from the University of Michigan in ConBio. I'm a certified professional wetland scientist, also a certified ecological restoration practitioner. I'm an authority on the invasive Japanese knotweed with several peer-reviewed publications on the topic. I'm the kind of volunteer who can bring a wealth of relevant information to the conversations that happen in conservation meetings. Uh, as a father of two young children, service on the commission required my partner to handle bedtime alone, so that was a family effort. Uh, I enjoyed my service on the commission because I was generally able to help people planning projects near valuable natural resources prevent harms that didn't want to happen. I felt I was providing a valuable service to the town, the residents, and the ecosystems I've been trained to protect. So, if you're not in the loop, uh, to bring everyone up to speed, I'll quickly review how it is that I find myself here. Uh, on May 11th, I wrote to the email selectman at townofnewberry.org that I'd like to be reappointed as a conservation agent, uh, Samantha Holt, had reminded me it was time to do. Uh, when the select board recently appointed the three new members to the commission on June 14th, it was pointed out that my name was not included for reappointment. On the 16th of June, uh, I forwarded that original message to Chair Greco and Agent Holt. Uh, when the next agenda, the select board came out on the 28th of June, and I was again not on it, I reached out to town manager Tracy Blaze and Chair Greco on June 27th. Uh, I was told by Chair Greco that I would be informed when conservation appointments are back on the agenda. Uh, I wrote back asking for confirmation that my last day on the commission would be at the end of June, uh, received no response. Um, by not reappointing me in June, the town found itself lacking a quorum on several items before the commission. Uh, Tracy offered me a legal argument that would have allowed me to maintain my place on the commission uh, and, I, uh, excuse me, uh, and allow those items before the commission to proceed. I declined her offer. I felt that the select board had clearly declined to reappoint me at least once explicitly and once implicitly. Uh, I made my choice uh, with the interest of the town in mind. Uh, to have a 4-3 vote take place would have potentially opened a legal mess that I didn't want any part in causing. Uh, I would have assumed that, given my professional qualifications, uh, the town would have encouraged my continued service on the commission, a body whose purpose is the promotion and development of the natural resources and the protection of watershed resources. Um, at no time has a member of the select board, Ms. Blaze or Agent Holt, communicated to me that there was some problem with the way I was chairing the commission. At no point have I received any input related to my reappointment not taking place. Uh, the select board has instead left it to the community to guess at motives. Um, so I would appreciate it if at some point you could, you know, for the record, tell me why you're not reappointing me. Thank and you. I know that this is not this. No, I'm, I'm going to respond to you because right, thank you. You're, you're here. Um, the fact that you were not reappointed earlier in June was an oversight. 
and um, my apologies on that. When I realized, and I was not aware of all, and uh, I was not aware that there was so much outstanding on the Conservation Commission, and when I realized that everything had to get, you know, I, I just honestly thought we could appoint you again. And when the, it, I realized uh, the effect of you not uh, being reappointed by June 30th, I asked Tracy to reach out to town council to find a way of what we can do. And the Commonwealth does have a bridge. You would have to accept the appointment, accept to continue in your role before, um, until the board could next meet to uh, reappoint you. And then none of those would have had to be, to be reposted. And you declined that re reappointment. So everything had to get reposted. And that's why. And you said that you are not willing, I will not serve beyond the date my appointment ends. Oh, that true. That was for that stretch. That wasn't well, a that was, withdrawal. That was, All right. that was what we got. And that's why. Okay, fair so. enough. All right. Um, well, thank you for your service for the town of Newbury. Okay. And, and may I inquire? He, you wish to continue, do you not? Well, I mean, that would sort of set up a bit of a um, staring contest with Brad, whose name is on the agenda for tonight. Um, so I think what I think you should do is um, keep, keep an eye on it. And if there's an opening on the commission again, we will reach out. But as of right, as of right now, there's a full commission. Well, exactly, I know. Um, but we, we appreciate your service, Brian. And I know, I know you've done a lot. All right. All right. Um, Thank you. May I make just one more comment? Just my nerves about, <clears throat> I think you guys just need to keep an eye on the commission because everybody's new. Yeah. It's a new commission. There's a lot of room and for mistakes. And you don't have your background. <laughs> yeah. So. so thank you. All right. Thank you Thanks. again. Okay, are there any other public comment? No. Just to, just to remind, you'll do my own, 12 Orchard Street. Just a reminder that we signed a proclamation to make Newbury a Purple Hat town, and part of the proclamation said that we would um, commemorate August 7th as Purple Hat Day. It's a national kind of recognition day. Mm -hmm. And I asked for permission to use the upper green, which you granted, and there will be a ceremony on August 7th at the Upper Green. Just to oh, remind Oh, great. You. Okay. Thank you. What time is the ceremony? It's at 4 o'clock. OK. How about any other public comment? OK, seeing none. Report of the chair. Um, I signed the PR 2226, the PR 2227, and the PR 2302 for Julie O'Brien. I signed the PR 2302 for the select board and the VW 2217 for Amazon. Um, also under report of the chair, I do want to say that Newbury Town Day is pulling together a cookbook and they are in need of more recipes. So I'm going to pass this out to the board, Jerry. And here, and I'm actually going to give one to Tracy and Martha. Actually, everybody in the room, come on up and get one. <laughs> You're all residents of the town of Newbury, or you work for the town of Newbury. <coughs> so here's that, and we need more. And I just want to, oh. yeah, you know what? Can you take some for the C COA? Yeah, yep. and leave them there. Um, Rhubarb juice, that's cool. So this is going to be um, if you, it, this is going to be really cool. They have about um, a little over a hundred right now, and I believe um, Lynn Kettleson went to the old the Museum of Old Newbury and pulled out four I don't know four or five recipes from the Museum of Old Newbury and entered them in here too. So um, if you have any questions, please email newburytownday at gmail.com with cookbook in the subject line, and they'll get back, get back to you. So there's that. OK. So that's the report of the chair. 
Under grants, gifts, and donations, we have a Council on Aging donation, Lee and Mary Fisk, of $4. Can I entertain a motion? Motion. I'll accept. And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. COA donation from June Brogan, $30. Motion to accept. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, any discussion? Seeing no. none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, a Council on Aging donation for the Friends of the Newbury Council on Aging, $16,000. Wow. Can I have a motion? Motion to accept. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Do you want to explain this one, Cindy, or? Cindy Carrier, COA director. Um, we work with the Friends. They are our fundraising arm. Uh, I went to them at the beginning of the or end of last fiscal year, beginning of the fiscal year, gave them several programs that we're looking to fund outside of our budget, um, gave them sort of a ballpark figure, and this is it. So they were generous enough to. Bravo. Give us a well, well done. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a Council on Aging donation from Fred Thurlow, a billiard table. Motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Cindy, do you want to come up again? <laughs> so Mr. Thurlow approached me, I want to say back in January, February, he has a billiard table. Um, very generously offering it to us. It's something he would play with his son. Uh, he lost his son, does not want it in his home anymore. So he's been very generous. It is a, Bill and I went to see it, it is a beautiful piece. Uh, would need to be moved by professional movers. There's slate top, they have to package it up and move it and then resurface it, all that business. Um, so he is willing to give it to us. We think it would be a great way for us to get another group of people involved in the Council on Aging. So for the time being, I would like to house it at the elementary school in our space because we've now moved downstairs, or in the process of moving downstairs. Um, but until we have a home of our own, I could at least keep it there instead of paying for storage. OK. Um, any questions? Yeah, Jerry. <clears throat> so you're going to keep it at the at the school. Um, why not bring it downstairs? Because won't that get more gentlemen to the uh, center? It could. The move downstairs is awesome, and we're very excited. Uh, it's a little bit more space for us. It's not a ton more space. So we have our main room that will have luncheons, major um, programming, things like that. We also have a side room that we want to have for other types of programs, our yoga, other exercise classes, watercolor class, different um, conferences type things. So I don't, it's not a piece that you can easily move. I don't have storage to sort of put it away. So for the time being, I would put it over there at the school. Um, it's a piece that, yes? Um, if you've ever played billiards, no, it just requires quite a bit of room to walk around the table play with cue sticks and yep. I mean, there's enough room downstairs to do what Cindy needs to do but there really isn't enough room to set up a pool table and to be able to use it and have other functions going on at the same time and we can't wheel it out of the way it's way too heavy and it's noisy Bill it, 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 is. Noisy. it is yeah, yeah. Noisy. but it's a piece that I don't have the budget to buy um, either new or used so to have someone be willing to gift it to us, I would rather hold it and wait for a space that we can really use it mm -hmm. than let it go. Um, I know in the letter that you sent to us, um, you said after spe it says, after speaking with town administrator Tracy Blaze, it was decided that we will maintain our space at the Newbury Elementary School and keep the billiard table there. Is that just going to be for storage or are you going to use it? At this point, for storage, if it's something that my plan would not be, having it at the elementary school would not be just a free for all, like I'll just leave the room open and you guys can go use it as you want. My plan would be specific times, staff would be there. We are open uh, late on Tuesday nights as well. We do game nights once a month. Maybe we do a game night over there. 
have the billiard table available, have our board games, we serve dinner, things like that. But it would be a specific time when staff is there um, and outside of school hours. And to, your, and to your point, it would be an excellent draw to try to get some Gentlemen. male participation yeah. and women to yeah. play pool as well. Yeah. Right. Have, has anyone, <coughs> uh, Ms. Blaise, um, Ms. Curry, contacted the school and find out to find out whether or not they were had plans for the space because they just know that they're leaving the school. As far as um, I know, I, I've spoken to Superintendent Forget previously um, and expressed to him that we would keep the space and he said absolutely it's your building whatever you want to do with it but I'm sure if you decide that you want the COA to vacate the space that they would have a use for it but, you know I'm sure they could find something to do with it okay. I mean the use of that like during the summer or the use of that some evenings would fit probably pretty well because some of the uses that the extended use of the council and agent had was during school hours. So if you were to run maybe a tournament for two weeks and it was an evening or two a week or something like that, it's, it would be good use for that. Dana, do you have any so, comment? Um, of course, the safety issue is an issue. And I... Safety, I'm sorry, safety... Of keeping the school secure. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue of mine, and I and and you've you've kind of explained how you were gonna run the, the scheduling and and I, you know I don't know is it gonna have to be staffed like at at these times? One of our staff members, either myself or our program coordinator, would be there whenever we have specific hours. We'd have it in our um, on our calendar and our newsletter to let people know when it's available. Well, and then you 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 mentioned that it was temporarily <laughs> permanent which I because because like the rebuild I do understand pool tables and the rebuild is extensive and to move it is extensive and it doesn't make sense to me that we would or that anybody I know Fred uh, offered to pay for it but it doesn't make sense to me that we would we would spend the six hundred dollars to refurbish it back to where it's playable and then either not be able to use it or have to move it again that 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 doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure the friends of the Newbury Council on Aging would take care of the six hundred dollar bill to, to remove the pool table if we were to move to another facility. I mean, would there be a plan on another location? I mean, is there another location for the pool table? Right now, or in the future? Our permanent home would be my plan, which obviously we're not going to be here forever, so I would have to move it even if we moved it here, because it's my understanding this is a temporary location, so. It's I'd temporary, it. but temporary, pretty long-term temporary, mm -hmm. until the yep. program can grow. Which um, we are growing. I know. I mean, I, personally, I, I, w I would like to offer the space back to the school before we, before we do this, but that's, that's just how I feel about it, that's all. I think the school would, would really like the space back. I, I have a concern about the opening into the school. With everything that's going on with today's day and with school shootings and everything else, that's, that's like a hole. You know, it's, it, it, you don't go in through the office, you go in through the bat, you know, the Council on Aging. It does have another entryway into the school to the, you share a bathroom and all that other stuff. Um, it's, we've lived with it because we've had to live with it. Um, is it best practice to have something like that? Um, I don't know, I, I doubt it. Um, it would be wonderful if we had extra space here and just could set up a little nook over there in the corner where you can play. Jared, just a, a thought. <clears throat> Has anyone considered just storing it at the school and not you know, have them move it don't have them refurbish it because we're going to be moving it soon and just have it stored there so you don't have to open open the store open the schools either way to move it it's still going to cost that six hundred dollars they have to dismantle it and put it back together but um even if i could just store it there i i don't want to not take a it's a magnanimous gift yeah. well right so even if we and put it at the school and didn't use it what about the library well there's enough I don't think we need to solve that problem tonight. I okay. think there's enough 
there's enough um, time because you're still not even out of that space yet, right? Well, I don't. I don't want to miss, guys. I don't want to miss the thought that Fred has put into this too. Oh no, no. I know. I think we should I mean, accept it, and we'll find a place. He wants the table to I go to the council for a reason. We've had some good ideas, but the agenda item is to whether accept. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, let's. That's what you have to vote on. So I'll entertain a motion. Well said, Bill. I'll entertain a motion to accept um, the Fred Thurlow's billiard table. Can I'll wait. second it. No, I'll, I need somebody to move it. Oh, I, I make a motion to say to, to accept Fred's magnanimous gift of a pool table to our town. Okay. And Dan, the council Dan, I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. So we have the we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Jerry? Dana? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the next we have, a, the police department has anonymous donation of $3,000. Motion to accept. Okay. Discussion? <clears throat> yeah. Second. Second it. Second. 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 Okay. Discussion, Jerry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have to tell you, the, the optics of this accepting anonymous gifts where a few minutes ago the Council on Aging donation by a four dollars from Lee and Mary Fisk their name is listed this anonymous person it just it just the optics looks terrible and <clears throat> I don't believe it it can be considered an anonymous gift since it's apparent that the chief knows who this person is is that correct, Assistant Chief? I'm unaware of anything oh. being on the agenda for that, so I don't oh. have a direct answer okay. to that question All tonight. Right. All right. All right. So this, it's my understanding, and I'll have Tracy speak, is that the, the gentleman or the woman or the family, whoever donated this money, doesn't want it to be made public. So that's why they requested it's an anonymous donation. Is that true, Tracy? Mm -hmm. We know who, who made the donation, but they asked that it not be made public at the select board and, meeting. And again, I think as far as transparency goes, it looks as, you know, why are they, why are they donating this? That's a lot of money. Well, do, do they have, let me finish. Yeah. Do they have a, a pending criminal case? Are they doing this to curry favor with the police department? It certainly does violence to transparency that this board is always talking about. So I have to, I have to say, I would move to amend, um, I would move that we not accept any anonymous donations to the police department because it just looks like whoever's doing it is paying the play to, to influence um, the police department. And I don't think it's right. All right, I have a motion. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second that. You want to second it? Yeah. Okay. Discussion. Um, along those lines, it, very valid point. I think the other the flip side of that coin with the whole, you know, defunding the police issues and the, the political ramifications that, that you might possibly in your own neighborhood, you know, they, they, they could be some people that would take offense to this if they knew who you were that, and that's all I that's all I can say about it you, you, you know so so when you well, say anonymous donations you want just the police because we have anonymous donations to the Council on Aging as well you do we want to make all anonymous donations or? I think all donations should not be anonymous and this is clearly not anonymous because in the chief's letter it says you know, the, that the donating party wishes to remain anonymous. So he's always, obviously had some communication with them. And, and unlike the letter from the Council on Aging um, that says what it can and can't be used for, this says um, it's to be used at, the, at my discretion, my being the police chief, in any manner I see fit to benefit the police department. Well, does that include his going to seminars or going out to lunch training, with people? Training, would be trainings and workshops and 
However, will benefit the But it's, it's whatever he wants to do, use in his discretion. So there's, there's no one who could say you're not appropriately using it. So I think this um, is, we, is just not The good. accounting office can say whether or not the um, donations are used appropriately. We have very strict guidelines on what the funds can and cannot be used for. And it has to be all legal municipal purposes. So, you know, they couldn't use it to go out for cocktails or something like that you're suggesting that would not happen. Well, I'm reading the chief's letter and certainly if it's to benefit the police his department. Discretion, well, if he, if he wants to go out to lunch with somebody who's selling police cruises or whatnot, why can't he use that? We don't pay for luncheons. Unless you're at lunch for a municipal meeting, mm -hmm. we don't pay for luncheons. Well, it says to be used at the discretion of my office in any manner that I see fit. So To benefit the police, police department. department. Yes. Yeah. And that's so pretty, pretty broad. It's pretty broad. It's very, very broad. So, but what, what I understand, the motion on the table, Julie, can you read the motion back? Well, the original motion was not to accept anonymous donations for the police department, which was first and second, but then you had a discussion, but we didn't first and second that they shouldn't be accepted for anything, so you'd have to start over. Okay, so this is only for the police, the police department. That's the one that's on the table. Can I have a little more discussion before? Well, yeah, hold on one okay. second. So, um... That went out my head. Go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. Is it is it any is this a precedence? I mean, have we have, have we ever done anything like this before? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So this isn't this isn't like even the police department. This is oh, yeah. this yes. is not a new thing. Yes, we, there there have been uh, recently. I think when in the last two months, there's been another three or four thousand dollar donation anonymous. So you know all of this <coughs> money. I mean. Yeah, but it's public monies, and they have to account. It's not. It's, it's people's money. No, it's no, no. But money. it's coming into the public, into a public fund. It's coming into the police department, which is a municipal account. So but it has, it to has be used accounting. for anything that the police chief wants. But, right, but, but any legal municipal purpose. Parameters around what they can use it for. He can't go buy himself a so brand new black Cadillac. Use at the discretion of my office in any manner I see fit. To I'm benefit the police department. Yes. Right. So are and we, Jerry, are we, um, are we trying to take off the table those type of donations, period? Yes, yes that's I what think this, so. This will yes, do. because it, because the optics, the optics, why is someone donating money, secret money to the police department? No, no. If you're, it's I'm anonymous, saying period, but it's not so really you're going to take anonymous. away money for the council and agent that wants to be, you know, are you going to take it away from the fire department or just... From every, you know, period. I'd say, I'd say, period. I'd say, period. If and, and even this last week, I got a phone call from uh, looking for money for the police, de for the police departments, not our police departments, but you know. So there are plenty of vehicles if people want to donate uh, anonymously, truly anonymously, to the police department. They could. I get solicited several times a year. Just come on up, Patty. Yeah. So just to address that piece, the Newbury Police Department doesn't use any vehicle to solicit donations like right. some other departments might. So our residents should never get a phone call from anyone, be it through the Newbury Police Department or the Newbury Police Association, soliciting funds. Okay, I get them all the time. I had that spam. Week. That's spam. Yeah, we we we've put it on our social media quite often. We that's a common spam. Yep. We never post our association or the department never contract with anyone to call our residents looking for money. And to speak about general donations when they're anonymous, historically, a lot of people want to donate anonymously so that there isn't the perception that they're getting favors from the police department, so that the general police force, the patrol officers out there, don't know that if they stop them for speeding, for example, that they're the person who made a $3,000 donation because it was public. So I think there's two sides to the coin of the piece that you're looking at as to why somebody might be motivated to donate anonymously to the police department specifically. That's just my experience and with that. I think that was well said, Patty. There's a lot, thank you, Patty. There's a lot of anonymous donations made across the world. I mean, I was at the, at the Metropolitan, at the Museum of Art in New York, and I had the, be the benefactor, and there's anonymous donations of quarter of a million dollars 
$5 million, and they're all anonymous. So this is not that something that's unique to us. I think it, uh, I think it provides protection, like Patty said. It, it, an, anonymity, although it's not really truly an anonymous, anonymous because right. the town does know who gave it, but right. for the public to not be and aware of it. And that's for the reason that it's not a drug dealer or something else, you know? Right. Right. So, there are, I, I, I think that it would do a dis disservice to not only our police and fire, Council on Aging, library, anybody that wants to donate money to the town of Newbury anonymously. And, 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 and I'm not in favor of that motion, but I'll call a vote. All in favor. What are we voting on? So the one on the table that you've done a first and a second is no accepting of anonymous donations for the police for department. The police. That's what's on the table right now. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Me? I got to go with an aye. Okay. So three, no, three two, to, two, to two, two and two. You, what are you going with? I, I, that we do not accept any anonymous donations to the police department. And I think that I'm, I'm not sure what the rules are now, but isn't this going to be moved forward when we have five members? No, no. we're going to no, vote on it now. Vote on it it's no, we just voted on it and it was a tie, so. So the motion failed. It fails. fails. Okay, I, I, that's what I didn't understand. Yep. Okay. I don't know how you stop anonymous donations. Well, you just did. You just, you just try to, <laughs> you tell the people we, they won't be accepted. Uh -oh. I don't know, I, I don't know why we would do that. Okay, public hearings, none. New business. New business license, uh, Amy Vino Flowers, 72 Turnpike, Newbury, Mass. Is a flaws. Amy, are you here? No, Amy. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. Motion to accept the new business license of Amy Vino Flowers. Is there Benno. a second? Benno. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Request for public property use, Essex County Greenbelt, Tour de Greenbelt. Is there a I motion? Think. Motion to accept the property use. Is there someone here? In a second. Can I have a second? Second. All right, discussion. Yeah. Hi. Come on up. You've been here before. <laughs> I'm, now. Yes. I'm Jane Rummerl. I'm the uh, events manager for Essex County Greenbelt. Um, we're asking permission again to send our Tour de Greenbelt riders through Newbury on September 17th and um, to host one of our water stops on the Newbury Lower Green. Okay. Um, no no painting no on nothing. our road. Nope. <laughs> we never do. We have little arrows no on stakes. No <laughs> okay. Um, any questions, anybody? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Good Thank luck you. with your. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, okay. We have re um, request of public property use. The first parish, Newbury Food Pantry, wants to put up a backstop at the at the Upper Green. The banner on the backstop. The banner on the backstop. Yep. There'll be a concert at the Mosley Arts Center to support the first parish, Newbury Food Pantry, on August 20th. They want to hang a banner at the backstop. Motion to accept uh, First Paris Newbury Food Pantry uh, banner on the Newbury backstop. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have review, approve, and assign fiscal year 23 appointments. The Conservation Commission, Brad Duffin. Motion okay. to appoint Conservation Committee member Brad Duffin. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Brad was on the committee before, and he um, he took a, a different position with his company that was going to send him overseas. Uh, that fell through, so now he just wants to fulfill the other term. He's only missed like two months of his commission, so he wants to fulfill his. He wants to fulfill the rest of his term, and he's already been on the committee before, and he and he knows he's kind of up to speed. So. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion. Second. Is there second. a second? Okay. Second. Discussion. Yeah. Um, could we? This. All we received is his name on the agenda 
and then um, the appointment list, just his name and the dates he, he would serve. If we could get some background information, so what's you, his background? That's an oversight. Julie, can you pull up the, his letter? Do you, do you have his yeah, letter? We, I mean, we didn't get that. We had uh, absolutely that, no That was my oversight. She'll go pull it up. And also, I mean, I, I have to, I have to say, I don't know why Brian Colloran, with his background, is not being appointed. Well, he, uh, we offered, it, we extended the, to roll it to him, and that was his response. He, de he declined to the appointment. And then things got rolling. And then we filled up the, we filled up the board. It's a shame. I agree. We have, every, all those things had to be reposted. While we're waiting, um, can we discuss something, Madam Chair? What do you want to talk about? I think we really got to think about this unanimous thing again, anonymous thing again. Not tonight, but we should we should take time to think about it because it cuts off a whole lot of people that might want to donate to our town and don't want to receive the notoriety of giving the money to our town. And I think it is crazy, Dana and, and, and Jerry. I think you got to think about it a little. I so. do. I'm, I'm a former assistant district attorney. Yeah. I'm a, a former defense attorney. So I, I've been around the but park it's, it's a few times. But it's so done, it's been, it, I've it, thought it, about it's, this quite it's a bit. Been, it's been done all over the country for anonymous donations is part of the fabric of America. Yeah, but when you have police officers stopping individual individuals, you know, and and it just the optics sound and look and they it smells like there's something sneaky going on. Well, but Patty had a very good point about not not having the police officers know who's give, given money. But the whole but thing. But the, the chief whole, knows, but and the he's the one who's in charge, and he, he approves of. But he doesn't patrol. No, but he's the one who authorizes. Um, you know, criminal charges to go forward and what they are in consultation with the arresting officer, I should think. Yep. It, why not? Traditionally, um, shift supervisors, the sergeants are the ones who are working with the patrolmen who authorize that. So as long as everything is going smooth, it stays from patrol supervisory into the patrol force. Um, if a next level needs to come, it comes through me operationally, so I will supervise the sergeants if they need help or if anything is kind of outside of the box of what's normal for us. And then if I need consultation, it goes to the chief. That's not to say that the chief doesn't have access to the log and can't see what's going on. There's nothing that's hidden or kept from him. But as far as layers of supervision or authorization, if we have a 2 in the afternoon or a 2 a.m. arrest, it's the shift supervisor who's working with the patrolman on that not it's the chief isn't being called for that just procedurally so this was the email that brad brad had sent gotten to, sent to us as a result of a recent change in my international travel commitment i am available to fulfill the remainder of my term as a member of the newbury conservation commission but this it's just the remainder of his term right up to june 30th 2024. 2024. but this this yeah it tells me he's available but what is his background? Mm -hmm. I know he's sat in it before, but what's his educational background? I mean, this is something that it would certainly be nice to know, especially when you when we're not appointing someone such as Brian Collar. And we've we've just put on an undertaker, a, co a contractor, and a, an elderly attor uh, law attorney. Uh, no one has the background that Mr. Collar has. She was a JAG attorney. Oh, good. So she's, she's, if we invade it, if we invade no, anyone, she'll be, all, she'll be all set. So she, I think she's a land use attorney. I think we had, we see, the reason why I wasn't included in this is because we just appointed him previously, and that has already been done, and he was fulfilling his own, his term, so I didn't think it would be, you know, 
he, well, it was I already mean, done. To me, it's a name. It, now it's a name saying I'm available. So that that's, doesn't give me any information. And I guess I'm tired well, of appointing people without knowing who they are. They don't come. You know, we don't get any information. Well, I'll, I'll have that sent to you. So I'll send it. So I need a motion to approve. We already have it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. I, I, is yep. the discussion over? Yeah, we just voted. Uh, yeah, well, no, I, I know, but I, I just kind of make a comment about it. I, I, I just, I don't think, I, I do think out of what we have, I think this probably is the best choice right now. Right. Uh, out, out of, out of, out of the people, out of the people that we have that want to volunteer for this position, I do just feel as though right now. This is probably the best choice. Right. That's all I can say about it. What do you it. base you. that on? So. Uh, well, that, that's, a, that's a valid question. And, and um, I talked to Brian. And Brian, you know, the, he, he, was, he was very much on the fence about doing this. And he, he never, I, I, I talked to you a little bit about it. And, and there, there was a lot of dialogue going back and forth. And I'll be honest, it's like, it's like he didn't reach back out to me and let me know that he wanted this position. So I, I didn't know. And I've been contact, I've been talking to the guy. You, you know, I was unsure. So well, um, I am a little surprised though. This came up, and I, I, know, I know I'm, I'm probably out of line here, but this was sent out on June 29th. Yeah, well, we haven't met. Okay, all right, good enough. This is our first meeting. Okay, so. Chair, can I just bring yes. it to your attention? When we were going through the donation for the police, we had a first and a second, but we never voted about Oh, to accept the donation? The donation? Yeah, we okay. went right into the. So, okay, oh, that's right. She had another, an additional motion. Okay, so um, all in favor of accepting the police de department anonymous donation of $3,000? We voted on that. No, we voted on not to accept any more anonymous donations, but we never. You, you, you didn't make that motion, Jerry. Well, yes, she did. Yes, did. Was that the motion? Yes. All right. Yeah. All right, so good we, catch there, Julie. We voted that motion. We never went back to, to the, the original, original motion. Exactly. Okay. So we have to go back that to the original motion to accept me more. <laughs> the police department anonymous donation of $3,000. Motion not to accept money. Not to accept it. You accept it. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Motion. To accept this three three thousand dollars. Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay. Now we're going to go down to appointments of election workers. We have Michelle Ogieri, Jane Boyer, Bart Bracken, and Claire Siebert. Are all motion to accept the folks that have volunteered for election workers? Again, my discussion. Wait a minute, I can second. Can you second it? I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Are these three appointments? We have no information other than their names. These came from the office of the town clerk. Um, are these are these I, not re reappointments? I don't think they're re they're all they're appointments. These are her suggestions, her recommendations. I don't think we've ever had resumes, Jerry, for election workers that volunteer. They always came through the, the clerk. Yeah. And we have a primary coming up. Yeah. It, uh, just one other question. Are these appointments, are they based on, um, like, there are four names. Are they based on party affiliation? Are they, like, two... No. Two Democrats, two Republicans, and no. no. They're just election workers. Okay. <laughs> just who we can no get. No party affiliates. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We, I would entertain a motion to sign the warrant for the 2022 state primary. Motion to sign the warrant for the two, two, yeah, 2022 state primary. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Don't forget. I can't forget to sign that. Okay. So now um, we have the Votes Act. So I will entertain a motion. I gave you. Um, did you see? Uh, Just for because that's what yeah. Leslie oh, asked. Oh, there we go. Oh, huh. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Well. <laughs> I move that the select board give the duty and responsibility of assigning constables 
in ensuring that any detail officers are assigned upon request to and after discussion with the chief of police to the chief elections official, town clerk. And that's not what is happening now. Can I have a second? So, um, yes, second. Thank you. It is what's happening now. Oh, so it's just reinforcing. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so, good to me. So the votes act. If you, I don't know, I'm just going to read through this so that the public understands what's happening. There was an election reform law titled the Votes Act, which is signed by the governor. Um, uh, section. Section 2024, Chapter 92 of the Acts of 2022, <coughs> that includes some changes in how local election officials will carry out their duties. The assignment of police officers and constables at polling stations, polling places, in consultation with the town's election officer, which is our town clerk, mm -hmm. now requires a vote by the Newbury Select Board. So the section 13 said chapter 54 is hereby further amended by striking out section blah and inserting this here. So as you were aware, Newbury has two voting pre precincts. For each election, a constable is assigned to each precinct during voting hours. In conjunction with the warden, their, dur their duties include keeping peace and good order both inside and outside the polling locations and enforcing the 150 foot rule, see attached. In the event there is a shortage of constables available for specific election, a police detail officer is requested to fill any hours as necessary. We are fortunate to have four elected constables whose specific duties are as listed above. Three of the four constables are former police officers and the fourth is a Vietnam veteran. It is my opinion the constables are <coughs> fully equipped to handle their duties as outlined and are well aware that our police department is always available should any circumstance ever arise that warrants police assistance or intervention. I have discussed this in my request at, that follows with Chief Lucy, who is in support of the recommendation under your hands at this time. Please let me know if you have any questions, and if necessary, I would be happy to discuss with the board at your early possible convenience. That's why I sent it out and I said, any questions, ask Leslie. And so she requested that the board vote as the motion is and if the select board is in favor this will allow continuity and performance of these duties under the business as usual mode while complying with the new law as it is as it is written so that's why the select this requires a vote of the select board to continue to use constables yes Jerry. okay um these are, are four elected constables. What happens yes. when the constables are on the ballot? We'd have the, the police. Yeah, the, would poli the, the police officers would. Right, because it, I should think it would be a conflict to have them present in the voting Oh, I site. would think so. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. All right, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Well, seeing they can't be within 150 50 feet, feet. Of, of the building, I would right. say that that would kind of be impossible, yeah, you know. Well, yeah, especially if they were wearing their labels. But I, I think what yeah, that's—I think that's what the new the new votes act does is it just, you know, makes it official that we have to provide this duty, and if we don't have enough constables to do it, the chief has said that he will support us in providing a full a, a, an officer or whatever to fulfill these requirements. That's really what this all this is saying. And I think it's always probably been done, but this makes it apparent right. that it needs to be done. Well, that's because he changed the law. Yeah. So now we have to vote. Yeah, yeah there may have been some towns that don't do this. You're right. They probably just don't have anyone there. But, you know, I think it's best if we keep the train going the way it's going. Yep. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's done. Oh, I lost my place. Lot of recognition, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Okay. So we have to approve a letter of recognition for Eagle Scout Mason A. Mislewi. I'm sorry, Mason, if I'm hacking up your last name. Ms. Louis. Ms. Louis. Ms. Louis. Ms. Louis. There we go. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> 
And that is uh, Dear Friend in Scouting, Boy Scout Troop 15 of Raleigh, Massachusetts is proud to announce that Mason Mislewi. Miss Livy. Miss Livy. It's a W. It's, it's Polish. Miss Livy. Miss Livy. Ah. Has achieved the rank of Eagle Scout as of June 23rd, 2022. I understand that you have responded in the past to such achievements as some form of recognition. Any communication from you would be presented at an Eagle Award ceremony. I would appreciate any action you impart supporting to this young man. So I'll entertain a motion to send him a letter of recognition. Just out of curiosity, do, you, do we know what he did to achieve the, the rank? Hold on. Can I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Second. Um, Anyone? It's not important. I'm Tracy, do you, can you describe what has to happen to become an Eagle Scout? Oh, let me take that. Uh oh, oh Jeff, that's all. Jeff. No, no. I, I know it's a, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work. Uh, well, but George, I'm just George and I started out at the same time uh -huh. at, at the level of I was assistant scoutmaster in Newbury, but George has been around for a tremendous, and he runs a really good troop. Right. And so I'm sure this young man had to really achieve all the things that needed to be achieved and go up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times now, sometimes these guys go quickly, but they don't really, you know, it's a little bit of a trip to see how quick they can get that judge judge runs a really good troop so I'm sure this is a really good Eagle so, Scout. I right. think Jim, oh, I'm, you're, I'm asking sure about, is. you're asking about what the project he did. Right, did. right. Oh, just the project? What his project yeah, would have been. I, I, it's I in know. Raleigh. Yeah. yeah. It's in Raleigh. <laughs> I, I, just if anyone knew. Yeah. Oh. Do you know Dan? I, I do not know. I'm, I guess my question would be the award ceremony. Do we know when and where that is? Like are you going? We might get invited. We get well, invited. Well, that's what I'm, you know, because we, we had one for our, for Troop 44 yeah. just recently. And if we are going to, well, obviously, well, I'm, we, can we vote on the letter? Did yeah. we vote yet? Not yet. Not yet. We're still second. having a discussion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would be nice if, if one of us could go to the awards ceremony and present it. Yeah. So we, we've done it before. And, yeah. You know, and especially, in Newbury, uh, so but definitely It'd be nice if someone went. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Full business none. Town administrators report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, along the lines of Ms. Newey, uh, we have just hired his, I assume, relative, maybe his brother Zach. Ms. Louie to be the new DPW laborer. So we'll be cool. joining our team in August, so we all need to learn how to pronounce that name. Um, <laughs> we're happy to have him join. Uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some grants that we've received. Um, we've been very successful as of late. Uh, we just received notification of a $70,000 grant from the Department of Fish and Game, the Division of Ecological Restoration for the um, Larkin Dam removal project that's in the works. And you may remember we've already received 50,000. So that this is an addition and this is all part of the planning process, which we anticipate will cost approximately $190,000 to get us through to bid documents. We also received notification from the state of the Winter Recovery Assistance Program grant. Those, uh, the, fund, um, the funding amount was $176,973.66. And that's for rehab, reconstruction, resurfacing, and preservation of roadways, repair or replacement of traffic control devices, signage, guardrails, storm grates, road striping. Um, our plan is to use that for paving Sunset Boulevard and Old Point Road. We're going to get those finished up. <clears throat> MassDOT also has notified us that our Municipal Small Bridge Program grant um, proposal was funded. That's $100,000. Um, this will provide us with the funding to complete phase one of the, um, oh my gosh, Central Street. Bridge, sorry, <laughs> just left my head for the Central Street Bridge for the design engineering um, that we're going to need to replace the metal archway. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. We received the bridge report 
back in 2021, I think it was, and um, you had it before the board at that point in time. So what we're planning to do is replace the arch, which was originally built, I believe, in 1968. The documents, when I looked back, that was the nearest I could When did determine. we do the rails on that bridge? We did the rails, I think, in 2012 or yeah, 13. And, and they were saying, yeah. Yeah, getting yeah. Um, the pictures show you, you can see that there, there are signs of rot, like at the water line. And naturally, if we left it and didn't address it, it would eventually undermine the roadway, but those bridge inspections are conducted, I think, every two years if a bridge is identified as being in, you know, having some serious issues, then they would conduct them more frequently, but they're, you know, they're aware that we're going to be addressing it. So we're hoping to continue working with Bayside Engineering. They were the um, engineers that we work with on the Main Street Bridge. And um, once the engineering is complete, which usually takes between eight to 12 months, um, then we'd be able to move forward with seeking funding for construction, which would be <coughs> phase two of the project. So all in all, it would, you know, we anticipate 18 to 24 months before you'd see that project complete, assuming we got the funding. Uh, so I'd need a vote to accept those grant funds. I'll entertain a motion to accept the grant monies. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I probably should have said the motion. Want me to say the motion? No, it's good enough. <laughs> Julie, is that good enough for you? Yeah, okay. yeah good. All right. <laughs> you can't remember it. <laughs> so uh, while I was putting together my report, I was also um, in the process. We're working on closing out fiscal year 2022. And I decided to review um, grant proceeds. It's, oh, it, we've never been a community that receives a significant amount of grant funds in any given year, but this year um, certainly has been a different story with, naturally we got the ARPA funds, which um, were about $2.1 million, so that boosted us up. But in addition to that, I thought it was important to note that we've also received another $1.534 in wow. grant funds this wow. year. And <laughs> you know, department managers need to be congratulated because they were in all aspects of our municipal operation. We have grant funds received in Human Services, Council on Aging, <coughs> over $74,000, Culture and Recreational Programming, Rail Trails and things like that. Thank you, Martha, over $585,000. <coughs> um, public Safety, grants that the PD has pursued and the fire department, turnout gear, things like that. We've received over $186,000 this year. DPW for roads and bridges, over $755,000 this year. Um, general government got $15,000. <coughs> IT received $250,000 right. in grant cost. funding. So, um, and some of them, it should also be noted that, um, you know, were received after the project. So town meeting funded a project, we did the project, and then a reimbursable grant came up. So the managers, went after those grants, even after the fact. So, um, you know, I really have to congratulate them because they're doing a, a great job in, in seeking those funds, finding them, following through, and, and getting them to the benefit of the town. Uh, the economic bond bill is out. Senator Tarr has notified us today that it includes two funding for two of Newberry's projects, $50,000 for the Main Street Bridge railing project, and $333,000 for the lock and dam removal project for the actual construction component. Wow. So that would be, I mean, the receipt of those two grants would be fantastic. So we're uh, always grateful for Senator Tarr's efforts on behalf of Newberry, certainly. Um, Cindy mentioned, Cindy Currier, our, our COA director mentioned that uh, they've been very busy getting their new center in order. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. I think it looks amazing, even better than we had imagined it would look. Um, plans are underway now for an open house October 18th, October 18th from 2 to 6. So oh, hopefully everyone can join for that. Also wanted to announce that there is going to be a garden party over at the library for our retiring director, Jean Ackerley. That's going to be Wednesday, July 27th from 5 to 7 p.m. 
if you're available. Uh, word is there may be flamenco dancers there. <laughs> it's going to be quite an event. Um, and I also received uh, an opera funds request from the COA back a couple of meetings ago. You may remember that we accepted a donation from the Friends of the Newbury Council on Aging for $15,000 yeah. towards this. We also received grant funding. Um, we are still short $112,000 for the purchase of this van. So, I mean, Cindy's here, I can certainly turn it over to her, but they're looking to replace the current van with an updated model, lower chassis with ramp access in lieu of stairs and a wheelchair lift in the back. The intention would be to um, ask the board to surplus the existing van and we would dispose of it um, through our bid process. Can I ask a question? Of course. The, uh, the, ARP, the ARP funds, and I, I probably have pronounced them that word. The ARP, 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 ARP Rescue Plan. Right. Do, do we, I know, I know where some of the money has gone already. Mm -hmm. Do we have like a, 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 a comprehensive plan on how we plan on spending that money? Well, the, the funds can be used through 2014, have to no, be committed 24. by 2014. No, so. no, 2024. I'm sorry, 2024. <laughs> yeah. It was good. It was yeah, good. 2024. Um, I'd like to have those years back. <laughs> so we've, I think at the board's direction, we've made a conscious effort to make sure that some funding went to human services, some to public safety, some to culture and recreational programming in the requests that have already come before the board but at, in terms of the available balance, which right now is around 623000 those funds are not committed to any existing project. Is, is where the funds have gone so far, is that posted any place? Sure. Can, it is. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Can yeah. I have this? Yes, of course. All right, great. And, and you said we have like, oh, yeah, here it is right here. We have $623,000 remaining. Do we have any idea what we're going to do with that? Do we know? Wait, God, wait as of see. sitting here right now. Wait, wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. That's it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Bravo sure. to getting all those grants. I mean, well done. Absolutely. Well done, Epic. Can you talk about the council aging grants? Do you want to? What do you want to talk about? Um, <laughs> Come on up. Built in Melville, Wichita Street. Um, that van is in the capital plan for the year 2024. Mm -hmm. It's next fiscal year, okay? And it's in the plan at an inventory replacement cost of $150,000. Okay. That would be taxpayer money, correct? Correct. And that would yeah. be voted upon at the annual town meeting. Right. So Cindy submitted the grant request for $112,000 to build upon the $68,000 grant we already got and the $15,000 check that we already got from the, from the Friends of Newbury Council on Aging. Yeah. So our hope is that by getting the $112,000 APA grant, we do not ask the taxpayers to vote to put $150,000 into a van. We can get the van without affecting the taxpayer. Right. That's why we, we, we submitted that, that grant re request. So Thank I, you. I, I don't know what the process is about approval of that grant request, but. Where do we sit with that, Tracy? You would have to vote it this evening. Let me see that. Oh, it's, on, it's, yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on the list. I just put it on. It says <laughs> presented. Requested today. Yep, requested today. Question. How long before you find out whether or not you've gotten the grant? We did. We did and receive did, the grant. Sixty-eight thousand. Yes. Right. It was but the one hundred and twelve. That's well. That's grant. requesting that's from, from the select board yeah, yeah. tonight. Oh, from, from our board. We have from our board. So, so it's it's a grant, but it's, it's right. From us. Yep. Yeah. Right. It's no, yeah, yeah. I would need you. Your so vote. I'll entertain a motion tonight to grant the council on aging one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Motion to grant so that they can. Council on Aging. all the monies they need to purchase their van. Twelve thousand dollars to complete the purchase of the Council on Aging's new van. From the Opera Grant. From, From the, the Opera Grant. Opera Grant. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Any discussion? 
Any discussion? <laughs> Everyone's sleeping tonight. I think it's a great way to spend the money. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> to be so honest I. with you, I, you know. So do I. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very you much. You guys got a new van. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> new digs and a new van. Okay. Did you want to vote to declare the other van surplus? I was thinking that yes. too. Yes. So yeah. I'll entertain a motion to declare the other van surplus. Yeah. Yeah. Question. What, what's the value? Do we know? And, and, and what are you going to do with it? Sell it to another council and agent. Another, or another what? town. Yeah. Goes no, to bid. What we do with uh, the once the board makes surplus declarations, there's a, a it's called a municipal bid program. I think that's what they call it now. And we we surplus all our vehicles through that. We used to do it ourselves okay. and put it out in the newspaper and competitively bid it competitively bid it. But we found that going through this municipal bid program, it has a much uh, wider reach and we have been getting significantly more for our um, surplus it's equipment good. than we were when we were doing it on our own. So it basically it goes to auction. It goes to auction yep. exactly. Yep. And um, how long is it going to take before we get a replacement because do we it, are we being a little too um, fast to no, we, I don't Do think it. we'll be without a van, will we? No, we won't be without no, no. a van. We won't um, okay. surplus it until. So yeah. I've been looking with different dealers, uh, and there is one that will have something probably November, December with this model that I'm looking at. But we would obviously hold on to this one until until then. We can declare it surplus, but we don't, we're not going to get rid of it right Yeah, away. but do you really want to declare it we can surplus wait until for insurance purposes? Yeah, we can wait until Cindy okay. knows if you'd rather wait. That's fine. Um, and that's it for your town administrator report, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Trace. Yep. Correspondence. So we got a letter from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. There was an open meeting lot complaint. This office received a complaint from Jack Rybicki on May 3rd, 2022, alleging that the Newbury Council on Aging violated the open meeting law. We resolved this matter by informal action in accordance with 940 CMR, blah, blah, blah. After reviewing the original complaint, the council's response to the complainant and the complaint filed with our office requesting further re review to be considered timely. Oh my gosh, let me see. Let me try to get to the end. <laughs> For the reasons stated above, we find the council did not violate the open meeting law. We now consider the complaint addressed uh, by this determination to be resolved. This determination does not address any other complaints. Um, Carrie Ann Kil Kilcoyne, assistant district attorney. So there was no there was no violation found by the council on aging. And the next letter we got from. Xfinity, as part of our ongoing commitment to keep you and our customers informed about changes to Xfinity TV services, we maintain an updated website, uh, www.xfinity.com, programming changes that list channels that may soon expire or terminate. On June 9th, 2022, we added Shop HQ to that website as unfortunately Due to contract violations, the programming might cease on July 12, 2022. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Kerry underscore Morris, M O R R I S, at Comcast.net. <coughs> and then we have meeting minutes. Oh, meeting updates. That's first. So we have some meeting updates, or I do anyway. Dana, do you have a meeting update? You want to go first? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm working, I'm continuing to work with uh, Karen and I'm working with Tracy about trying to increase um, the, it's, it's got to do with property taxes and I don't know what to call it, it's like credit, it's like credit for disabled <coughs> veterans and the, the state mandates <coughs> an X amount of dollars uh, that, that they have to receive if they apply for it. And I understand that they don't necessarily have to apply for it. They may not want to apply for it. It, it takes, um, I guess, some of your personal finances you have to disclose, that kind of stuff. 
Uh, however, what I have found out is, is the town has the capability um, through voting of, of doubling that amount of money that those veterans receive. So um, that's work in progress. Um, I'm all for it. Um, I'm not going to receive any money myself, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I do. It help some residents. I, I think that you know. I, I think that you know. We we have disabled veterans that are on a fixed income that are disabled. They they. I, I don't know. What they, you know. I, I don't want to say that they don't have jobs or anything, but they they are in need of this additional money. And I I would like to see if we could make this happen. That's all. Yeah, that's good. Good. Now is this state reimbursement? It's it's partially state reimbursement, and uh, Tracy has those numbers. Not much. It's one of those mandated things that we have to do. That they they most of the time they reimburse less than half of the mandated amount, let alone the increase that I'm looking for. So it it I'm I don't know how this is going to play out. We're going to get town council involved. I don't know if it's going to have to go to a annual town meeting or not, but I'm working on it. Okay. Um. I smile at the state when they have contracts to mandate stuff and it's all appropriate to the budget, you know, so you, you get into what, what the schools should get and what they get. So all speaking of unfunded mandates, yeah. I attended the uh, MMA uh, fiscal policy committee meeting today. And there's that hybrid meeting mandate that the state's coming out with where they require you to all boards and committees to hold hybrid meetings, um, both in person and remote and virtually. Everybody, library trustees, <laughs> schools, uh, everybody. Timeline on this? Well, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna happen because it's it's gonna cost huge. There's yeah. bigger cities and towns. Yeah. They're gonna have to hire a full staff to, to do all this. And it's just it's not it's it's an unfunded mandate that's not reasonable. So today what I learned is there's a lot of chatter about this because people aren't, aren't happy about it. This it's probably not gonna happen because it's too costly and it requires too many additional staff to cover all of the meetings. So if you have multiple meetings running at the same time, they all have to be covered. Yeah. So so that's probably not going to happen. I guess this, it passed in the House. I, the feeling at the MMA level is going to die in the Senate. Um, there may be something that, that may come out in another way to address this, but that's not going to happen. Um, there are um, a lot of grant programs coming from the state. Um, there are several bond bills that um, are up there in the hundreds of millions of dollars for infrastructure that's going to be made available in the Commonwealth. So any other additional bridges that we have, if we continue to write these grants, we'll probably, we'll probably get them. I'd like to see Newbury get their share. Um, as far as the the MMA, uh, the Fiscal Policy Committee goes. There was a discussion today about the Massachusetts School Building Association and how it hasn't been updated lately and how it's, um, I think they paid $325 a foot for construction, which is now <coughs> almost $700 a foot. So it's not, it's gonna be revamped and that's gonna be a focus of the committee in the fall, seeing how we can refocus that and I think that will help us when we go to do something at the Triton Regional School School District. There are five days to go until the legislative session ends and they expect big changes from what I just reported. In five days. In five days. Okay. There's a lot of balls up in the air and they must be working 24-7 <laughs> but they they didn't even pass out the PowerPoint because she said by the time this meeting ends, it's going to be obsolete. It's just everything is ch is changing. So that was that meeting, um, and warrants. Do we have warrants? Oh, we have to re review me yeah. meeting minutes. minutes. I'm sorry. So, uh, um, can I I'll have a motion to approve select board meeting minutes of six twenty eight? Motion to approve meeting minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. And same for the minutes of 714. Motion to approve 714-22 meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Warrants. Motion to sign warrants. I know that. <laughs> Motion to sign warrants. So moved. Yep. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Executive session none. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.